Hey everyone, this is Etherblade here, and this is my review of Season 2, Episode 1 of The Following, which aired on Sunday. What can I say about The Following? Hmm. This episode was crazy, and the writers of this episode are fantastic, but then I think the writers of the series are pretty fantastic anyway. So, um, what can I say? I went to New York Comic Con this year. I sat through the panel, and the first five minutes of the show, whereas Ryan Hardy is watching as um, Claire, Joe Carroll's ex wife, is dying on the ground, and then uh, they end up in the hospital. And um, basically, Ryan wakes up from a coma and finds out that Claire is dead, and. We basically saw those few minutes, and um, watching it again was pretty upsetting. Even though I know that the actress, um, Natalie Z, I believe her name is, she plays Raylan Gibbons' wife, on, or ex-wife, on Justified, so she's just giving birth to a baby, so I'm thinking she might appear this season, maybe? I'll just have to keep watching, because I'm up to episode three, so... We'll see. Um, as far as the episode went, after that, all you saw was Ryan Hardy basically running. And I guess that's something that he started doing. Um, he's become a professor at a school or a consultant or something about serial killers. Maybe he works as a professor for the FBI. I'm not even sure. They really didn't go into it. They were talking about different murders. So, Okay. Um, the scene in the subway, I can say, scared the crap out of me. It is something that makes me rethink even getting on a subway in New York City, and I ride subways a lot when I'm out there, so <laughs> I'm still laughing at this scene. This scene was crazy. Um, basically, you have a couple that looks like they're about teenagers, maybe, maybe in their 20s, a young woman with curly hair who... I'm assuming is on her way maybe to school. Um, you have a gentleman in a leather jacket or some type of jacket. I don't know why I thought of a members only jacket. I just, the color maybe, I'm not even sure. And then you have actress Connie Nielsen who is well known for the television show Boss playing um, Kelsey Grammer's wife and um, from the Devil's Advocate. She basically played the Devil's Daughter. So she pops up in this beautiful pink jacket, I guess you could call it an overcoat. These five characters are basically blocked into the subway by three people in Joe Carroll masks who keep saying, revolution, Joe Carroll's um, alive, Ryan Hardy can't save you, bunch of stuff. Well, they start, they stab and kill the couple, the young black woman, the curly hair, they stab her all in her stomach, she's out. They stab the gentleman in the members-only jacket. He decides, for whatever reason, to get up and play the hero and is taken out with an ice pick. And then the only person left is Connie Nielsen, who gets cut up, but she fights back, and they make it to the destination stop. And she's, like, basically falls out, like, screaming. Okay. Which I don't know how realistic that would be in New York, considering, like, if those weirdos got on a train and I was there... More than likely, I would probably get off, or I would probably, like, if they had gotten on with those masks on, which is what they usually do in this show, because last year, you know, it was the Edgar Allan Poe mask, I probably would have gotten off the um, train and just ran. I don't, I try not to stay on those trains when the weird people start getting on there. But, um, anywho, you find out that, um, there is a character on there who is a gentleman, I believe his name is Luis Rick. I can't think of his name, but I do know him as Bodie from the HBO show The Wire, and he basically it becomes the face of this problem because he is the one, for some reason, that pops up and everyone saw him because Ryan Hardy is chasing him. Okay? And um, what basically happens is that even before this, this gentleman, this young, pretty girl comes back to her um, 
apartment building and she sees this guy in black. He's handsome. I, I actually think he's handsome. He was actually on um, Dexter last season as Dexter's young um, apprentice, if you will. He is on there. And she, like, smiles at him. He smiles at her. They kind of flirt. So she gets into the elevator, and when she gets out, she basically sees the same guy. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe he can run his behind off. Maybe she lives on the second floor. I don't know. So they cut away. When they come back to this scene, you basically see her laying in the bed in her underwear, bra and panties, and him just laying in the bed with no shirt on. He's talking to her, telling her about how cuddling is better than having sex, this whole big thing. Well, the next thing you know, he says something about being hungry, goes into her kitchen, starts making something to eat. And he's still talking to her, so you think maybe she's sleeping, she's ignoring him, she's mad at him, I, and anything goes. Well, all of a sudden he picks her up, starts dancing with her, and her head starts flopping around, and that's when you realize she's no longer here. And when she won't respond, he goes into the bathroom, and you can hear the water running. So I'm thinking maybe he, I'm wondering, like, who the hell is this person in, in the shower? Well... He says, I think I'm going to need a little help with her. And they pull back the curtain, and it's the exact same face coming out of the curtain. So I'm not sure, like, I'm sitting there like, holy, like, I'm, at this point I can't even speak. I'm like freaking out. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, okay, we'll figure this out some way, somehow. And the next thing you know, I'm like, okay, they must be twins. These twins, I'm assuming they both killed her together. Did they have sex with her? Necrophilia? Like, what the hell is going on with this? Okay. So then you get back to um, Ryan Hardy, who basically, I guess he keeps popping up. He comes along because he wants to know what happened, you know, on the train and everything. But he keeps telling them and he tells the... The news, like, listen, I'm not a part of this. I just want to see what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So then you get to see his partner, the one that almost died last season. His name I can't remember, but by next video, I will definitely write it down and remember it. But anyway, he he's living somewhere else. And this guy from the FBI, who I think I remember him from either Homicide or NYPD Blue. It's an African-American guy with, like short cropped hair and they basically pull Ryan Hardy's um they basically pull his um partner back in so they're at the crime scene because what happens is they decide to take this young guy they take the the twins take this girl okay because she's dead and they prop her up they have her tied up they have her reading this book and you're like why is she out there in the cold in this beautiful white dress and her hair is all done? She has all makeup because apparently they started doing her makeup. <sighs> Some crazy people out here. And to make a long story short, they do her makeup. They pop her out there. Ryan Hardy pops up. He still says, I'm not a part of this. Okay. Somehow between the melee, Ryan, I guess figures out because they start looking at the body types of the different people on the computer who were on that train like the people with the Joe Carroll mask and they I guess find a body type and they realize one of them is Bodie from The Wire. That's so why I'm gonna call him Bodie because his name is either like I said Ricky or something of that nature and Ryan goes to his apartment sees him they chase a chase ensues they're running around and of course Ryan gets hit by a car because it's not the following without Ryan getting hurt in some way. Okay. So the next thing that you know. <sighs> Bodhi gets back to the hotel room. There's a woman speaking French. And I mean, this this lady is like, and I'm, she's going faster than me. Like, if I could understand it and if I had learned it in college, like, I would be over my head. So he just tells her speak English, which is basically what everybody else is saying, like speak English. It's offensive, but I guess he's in des he's desperate. Well, he's sitting there, and they look at the news. His face is everywhere. 
So the guy, the twins all of a sudden come in with their weirdo self, especially the one with his hair like slicked back. Like the, the one with his hair kind of down is cool, but the one with his hair slicked back seems kind of like nutty. I think that, that like the way that they did it is it's the same guy playing two different people because for some reason I thought that maybe they had two different guys playing it. Maybe they do and they just like um, superimpose the other guy's face on it and his facial expressions. It's amazing what they can do with the effects. But um, anyway, to make a long story short, one of the twins, and I believe it was the one with the shorter hair, he tells Bodhi to hug him. Because Bodhi's all upset. He's like, I'm sorry. He was like, they didn't know. How did they know my face? I'm not even sure. Well, Bodhi refused. He's like, dude, I'm not hugging you. So the guy goes up to him and hits him right in the windpipe. So he's struggling to breathe. <gasps> like doing all of that. And um, to make a long story short, somehow in the melee, they have this dude looking in the, standing in the corner like he's a little kid. I'm like, what is going on with this, with these twins? Hopefully by Monday the 27th, because they're going to re-air this episode anyway so everyone can see it. Because when they showed it, it was after the Seahawks and Broncos game. And a lot of people tuned in maybe 10 minutes late thinking that it was 10.30. The only reason why I saw it is because I just continued watching the game from like 9.30 down. I was like, screw this. I'll just sit up here, try to play The Sims, and go on from here. And I just watched it. To make a long story short, um, they cut away. And you see this guy, because like they're asking like Bodhi, they're just like, well... How do you know and did it? And he was like, I don't really know anything you know. This was earlier in the episode. I don't really know, you know. Because I came and I got Joe Carroll. And da, 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 da. Okay. So they cut to another scene. You see a woman with fiery red hair in bed with a man with like a beard. You really don't see his face, but you definitely recognize the woman with the red hair. That is... Uh, Arlene Fowler, yeah, from uh, True Blood. And for all you Emma fans, Emma does appear. I'm not going to give that away. That's why I'm being very spotty with this so that you can see this stuff. But that ending surprises you, so I'm pretty much going to leave it out since you guys got to see it on the 27th and you'll just tell me how it is and you'll, I guess you'll comment and let me know how this goes. But um, all I can say to you is that this episode surprised the hell out of me. And even me describing that subway scene doesn't do it justice. You gotta see it yourself. They told us what to expect at that panel at New York Comic Con, but I never thought it would be this intense. Never thought it would be this intense. It's, it's absolutely just overwhelming how intense this episode was. And I'm wondering how episode two is going to be. Um, a lot of people were confused, I guess, about the scheduling, but I was reading online that uh, Fox changed it because they were going to separate the Sleepy Hollow, pan Sleepy Hollow finale and they were going to have it whereas the following came on the 19th and the 20th, or the 20th and the 21st, I should say. And then um, all of a sudden, for some reason, but I think, no. I think I confused myself. I could have sworn they said 19th and 20th. But anyway, they were going to have one episode come on. Then they have um, the F Sleepy Hollow come on at 8. And then have the following come on at 9. And then the next day show another episode. But I guess someone somewhere decided we're not going to split up this show. This show is fantastic. Let's do it another time. But I'm glad they showed this so that I got time to, you know, prepare myself for the crazy that's going to be this season. I know I didn't do any videos of season one but I can say one thing that scene at the end of season one where that agent died and she was spoiler alert she was um I guess she was buried in that whole scene with them stabbing and cutting it was two through like the following is one of those shows where every single week I was just screaming like the hell is this oh my god oh my god I swear you know Kevin Williamson has his work cut out for him and he's just writing these shows and just <sighs> I have no idea but um anyway thank you for tuning in I'm uh, 
Etherblade, and um, this is my first video, as you can see, because I'm nervous as all crap. I will definitely have a review for episode 2 on the 27th. I'll probably have a review of the Sleepy Hollow finale as well. Um, just thank you so much for tuning in. Definitely comment. Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye. <laughs>